Okie dokie, my artichokies. Have I got something to share with you? If you're a long time member of the What Do You Mean team, you uh already gonna understand well and truly why this really got me going. But for any newcomers, here's a brief rundown. Here in Australia, on Monday nights on the channel ABC, we have a show Q&A where they have a panel of people and you can ask them questions from the audience or over the internet and they're meant to respond. And this Monday, we had a ripper of a river themed panel. We had, starting with least mentioned on this channel, Fiona Simpson, the president of National Farmers Federation, Joel Fitzgibbon, the shadow minister for agriculture and research sources. And then Marianne Slattery, which you may remember from the video I did titled Fantastic, great move, well done Australia, and the thumbnail hashtag Ozpol, where I got a whole episode of Four Corners, another ABC program, investigate big issues facing the country. I got a whole episode of that down to six minutes, and they were in, that episode was on the Murray Darling Basin plan, and this woman here, Marianne, she walked away from the agency, the department, because she was disgusted with how messed up it all was, really. And then... Kate McBride, I don't think I mentioned by name, or I may have mentioned a family member of hers, another McBride. In one of my first videos I did, Cod, Cotton and Corruption, where I go through details on the millions of dead fish at Medindi Lakes and show my findings. I will link to these prior videos, and the thing that both of those videos had in common was all streams lead to David Littleproud, who still has me blocked on Twitter, the coward. So yeah, all these people were put in the same room. I was cheering. So I'm obviously hands down on team Marianne and team Kate. So I'd like to show you this bit of footage of Kate putting Little Proud neatly folded up, packaged away back in his place. Hi my Minister, you look quite emotional. Well, these people, I mean, before I came into politics, I was, I was a banker out in St George. These, these are people I know uh, personally. But are they telling you you're making mistakes? No. Because we're hearing it all over the place, it's str strange that you're not hearing it. Because, you know what, those people, they want government out of their lives. And they see for the first time since this thing started, before I was even in politics, they see for the first time they can, they can have government out of their lives and they can get on and do what they do best, which is grow food and fibre. Can you say that to the people of Menindi, though? I mean, you look at the people in the Lower Darling, but also from like down below Burke, we've got a 1400 kilometre stretch right now of river that is bone dry. We are having the lowest ever inflows into Menindee Lakes, and that's not just because of drought, because we've seen report after report point the finger at mismanagement and over extraction. And so how can you say to those people, and myself included, that live along there, we're not going to put any more water back in the river from buybacks, you guys just have to sit at the end of the river and die. But that's what you're telling us right now. <laughs> And I can tell you the same emotional story in Queensland where you can walk across those rivers at the moment, those riverbeds, and you won't even get mud on your boots. There is a supply issue, a significant supply issue. And when you talk about that event that happened in, in Menindi and, and that horrific fish death event, make no mistake, uh, the reality was the, the water managers had to make a decision whether they use that water because it, it uh, is the least efficient because of this thing called evaporation and it evaporates quickly. So they had to make a decision what they use for it. It's a natural lake system. Evaporation so what occurs. they had to do was did they, do they leave that water evaporate or do they get an environmental outcome out of it? And you know what the environmental outcome they got out of it? The biggest spawning event of Murray Cod in our nation's history from that water that was let go. That doesn't, that does not for any way make up for the, for the fish death that happened. But let me tell you, and let me say, fish deaths aren't new. I grew up on the Condamine River. I've seen... Of that scale, Cod. they are. You know, uh, we've seen over 600 of them in the last 30 years in New South Wales. And I've got to say... Why it, did it go? It went we, overseas. Like, we, this was, like, it went worldwide. We had people from, like, just last week, I had more people come out from Germany. This isn't normal. They're like, that is the biggest issue. We've got government trying to normalise normalise what is going on, that the darling should go dry and that fish should die. That should not happen. Uh, and yet at the same time, when all that was occurring, I went up into Queensland and I saw huge amounts of cotton. Huge amount. It is right. I've got footage of it. Uh, so let me, let me make it clear. The environment and community have to come before things like that. That needs to be the way it's done. And, and, and let me make it clear that the MDBA, is, is just, they don't own the water. They, they are the, just the water managers and send it down on behalf of state governments who have, who have 
uh, arrangements between them that have gone back generations uh, with irrigators and also the environment. And basically the MDBA sits down every year and says, this is the pool of water we've got. This is what your allocation gets out of your entire... Obviously, this is the kind of show that has a Twitter and a hashtag for it. So, yes, son, I unleashed. Let's have a little look, shall we? First one. When the video of Dead Fish went viral, David Littleproud came out and did an interview with ABC and he said it was drought, then started talking about dead kangaroos in WA. Then I thought I'd tweet out some of the maps and the water catchments and the reserves with Medindi circled. Thought that would be good in the mix. Oh, I can't remember exactly what was said, but something was said that sparked my memory of Deputy Prime Minister McCormack running his mouth in question time in Parliament saying there's so many resources that we're just not tapping into and states should really think about drilling for that gas or mining for that coal. Oh, and then a video question was sent in by a farmer calling out Little Proud and it was a verbal fly kick to the back of his head. And then my memory came to motor neuron disease and how it even says on the government website that exposure to the algae that's caused the fish to die can cause problems of the nervous system. Quote, oh, and now I just got sick of Little Proud saying, I can't make it rain. Oh yes, and then finally I was over the moon when I finally heard the C word. Both C words. Corruption and capitalism. And I think this is a perfect segue into the person that said these words. Look, we just come back from the big Yamaganabaka corroboree on the rivers, Walgut, Bree, Burke, Volcanium, Minini. And look, I took a group of, um, there was, a, there was a, a convoy of 300 people. And on the rivers, we had about a thousand in the corroboree each night. Um, those indigenous people that come on that journey spoke to a lot of our elders in those communities. And they wanted to hear from the voices of those communities, those voiceless, that have been voices over the last couple of years, look, the impact of the water mismanagement and the corruption and the corporate greed and capitalism in this country has killed our rivers. Yeah. <laughs> they have killed our communities. Look, we've been out in those communities, uh, the health is deteriorating in our communities, our old people are now dying, our young people with a high rate of, of mental health, suicides, dialysis, people that are on dialysis can't get water to flush their machines. So they've got to move on, now migrate to bigger towns, bigger real towns and cities. So a lot of the First Nation people are leaving their tribal, their lands that they've been, you know, that they lived on for their thousands and thousands of years. How do we bring back the 50-year-old cods? How do we bring back the freshwater mussels? How do we bring back the aquatic life, the ecosystem, and the animals that relied on the river and the water? They are now completely dead. They're extinct. This has happened over the last 100 years. Australia needs to wake up. I'm listening tonight. We're listening to... There's two things that I can hear. It's water and profit. Why are we selling water to make profit? That's what I'm hearing. And here my people on the river that relied on those animals for the food source for thousands of years are now dying. This is the second wave of genocide that's happening in my community. So I'm going to speak on my community and I'm going to raise a voice for those that have been voiceless over the last 230 years. That's what frustrates me, and that's what's frustrating our community. Why are our people are dying young? Why are our people are suffering? Because of the greed, the taking of our water. Where is our rights to water? First Nation rights to water. We have a right to fresh water. Put the water back in the river, not just for us, but for the environment. Thank you very much, Bruce Shelton. Perfectly put, Bruce. And I'm so glad that somebody actually put Kate McBride and David Littleproud in the same room. As soon as I started looking into what happened with the dead fish and learned about these two people, for them to face each other needed to happen. And then having the person that walked away from the corrupt river management department, well done, Q&A. And yeah, 
there's not much more I could really add to that that I haven't already said. And water profiteering has to stop. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, become a patron. Have a good one.